Hello, and welcome to Tech Cubicle on SAP. In a previous video, I'll put the link above, I explained how the SAP Basis Administrator role was going to change with a Rise with SAP subscription. As a reminder, we described the two different categories of basis used internally within SAP. Technical basis is the name given to the technical layers of SAP, such as infrastructure, operating system, kernel, and database. Application basis is the name given to the application stack administration, such as NetWeaver or s hana application layers. For example, an application basis role would administer RFC communication from transaction SM59, but would not install SAP applications using operating system commands. Under a Rise with SAP subscription, a typical basis administrator role would be responsible for application basis only. I decided to call the current pre-Rise basis administrator role classical basis administrator instead of legacy basis. At the end of the previous video, I talked about two possible directions for classical basis administrators. The first direction would be to work for SAP. With more and more customers choosing a Rise with SAP subscription, it's logical that SAP themselves would need basis administrators with certain skills, and that included infrastructure level knowledge and experience. The second direction is to become a partner cloud architect, or what I call a cloud mega basis. A partner cloud architect works for an SAP partner consultancy, providing guidance through the RISE adoption process so that SAP customers going through a RISE migration or implementation can receive the correct deployment package combinations. There is also a third way that I will talk about at the end of the video, which may be an option only for a very select few. Now we've caught up with where we got to, Let's discuss those options in a little more detail. Are they really viable and what we need to do to get there? Option one, working for SAP. Let's take this road. Our classical basis administrator wants to retain their skill set, which includes multiple technical layers from infrastructure all the way through to the application administration. When a software vendor takes on the task of providing a subscription service to a customer, that comes with specific service level agreements that need to be met. We saw in the Rise Roles and Responsibilities document in the previous video that there are a lot of tasks that we performed by SAP, from the infrastructure all the way up to the application level. We also saw how the customer is still responsible for some of the basis work. The application basis role falls to the customer to perform, although the customer could choose to pay SAP for additional tasks to be performed. I would imagine that the majority of customers would still perform the application basis themselves, initially. The customer requests tasks from SAP by completing a service request ticket. That ticket would go into a triage queue for validation, and eventually, after finding the correct team, it would be processed by a processor or engineer or whatever that role is called. Some requests would require multiple tasks or steps. Based on evidence so far, those technical teams are separated by skill set. An SAP installation request would use a team for infrastructure provisioning, followed by a team for SAP installation and post config. So, if our classical basis administrator was to work for SAP as a basis administrator, it should be expected that they would not be using their full skill set. Our classical basis administrator would probably need to choose a particular area of skill to sacrifice so they could be placed into a dedicated team of experts with a specific technology focus. For a while, this could be an opportunity to become an expert in that specific technical aspect. Therefore, my recommendation for this path would be to try and specialize in one of either cloud infrastructure with basis or operating system with basis. By knowing, for example, the cloud infrastructure inside out, specific nuances between Azure, AWS, GCP, coupled with the basis knowledge, this path would provide a route forward into an SAP cloud engineering role. Alternatively, knowing the operating system inside out, specific nuances between SUSE and Red Hat, different cluster technologies, and coupled with the basis knowledge, this path would provide a route forward into a senior engineer level role. Both roles would benefit from knowledge of DevOps principles, automation capabilities such as Ansible, Terraform, and also implementation and operational knowledge of containers. Both roles could allow migration out of the SAP specific domain eventually. Option two, becoming a cloud mega basis. Let's look at this option to gain the skills to be what is known as a partner cloud architect. As a reminder, a partner cloud architect works for an SAP partner consultancy, providing guidance through the RISE adoption process so that SAP customers going through a RISE migration or implementation project 
receive the correct deployment package combinations. Not only this, but the Partner Cloud Architect may also be needed to help customers manage their existing RISE landscape. An example is the process for requesting additional landscapes or integrations such as SFTP or Office 365. This requires the requester to understand how SAP provide those items at an infrastructure level, to be able to flow through the request process efficiently and ensure that the correct information is provided to SAP in the request. Like in my previous video, my view is that not all customers will be RISE customers initially, but eventually they will be as SAP moves to become a purely SaaS provider. This means that more partner cloud architects will be needed in the short term as we approach 2027 and head through the 2030s. The core skill required for becoming a partner cloud architect on top of SAP basis knowledge is IT networking. One of the very first tasks in a RISE deployment is understanding how the customer's network will integrate with the RISE network. A very good grounding in networking fundamentals is needed. How subnets work, what technologies are needed for connectivity, how encryption of network traffic is performed, and how identity and authentication will be performed across the two networks. As well as networking, a fundamental public cloud hyperscaler knowledge such as Azure, AWS, or GCP is needed. But this does not need to be all of them down to a detailed level. An in-depth understanding of maybe just one provider with others at a more fundamental level is enough. The main thing is knowing how SAP would go about deploying an SAP system onto a hyperscaler and the components involved and the information required by SAP from the customer for the installation to be completed correctly. As well as fundamental cloud knowledge, the partner cloud architect needs to know operating systems. Again, this does not need to be in depth, but enough knowledge to understand that there are differences, what is and is not supported by different SAP technologies, as well as what other software may or may not be required. Knowledge of high availability and disaster recovery technologies and the principles behind them is required. The Partner Cloud Architect will be responsible for understanding the customer's business service level requirements and translating those into a set of technical requirements that meet those desired levels subject to cost, which is another key skill, communication. The Partner Cloud Architect will need good communication skills to perform this translation correctly, got the sign off of the key stakeholders and delivered the system in a way that meets expectations. It's not a lone wolf role, it needs meticulous organisation to perform the required tasks at the correct time to ensure that optimal customer experience is achieved on behalf of SAP, the customer and the consultancy that the Partner Cloud Architect is representing. I'm going to suggest that hostage negotiators are probably good candidates for this role because they will be required to ensure the correct amount of pressure is applied at the right times to the teams delivering the RISE solution, which includes SAP, the customer and the consultancy. So we've laid out two paths for basis administrators, working for SAP or working as a partner cloud architect. At the beginning, I said there was a third way. Option three, working for a global consultancy. The third way is working for a global consultancy that is SAP certified to provide RISE with SAP. In episode 11 of my weekly 180, I mentioned that T-Systems provide RISE with SAP as a certified partner. This certification is for the whole stack, from infrastructure support to migration and consultancy. There will be only a very few of these global players that can provide this full stack RISE solution, and they will need to be in the hosting game. Throughout the decades of supporting on-premise SAP deployments, the consultancies have learned a thing or two about supporting customers through SAP migrations and deployments and hosting. Each of those areas are often combined into efficient towers of expertise, much in the same way that SAP will be doing underneath RISE. The benefit of working for a full stack global consultancy will be that during this unique period of time where there are RISE and non-RISE customers, the full stack global consultancies will be offering services to both. This provides a career path progression for our classical basis administrator into any of the other two avenues we mentioned above, within the same company. Gradually, as more customers move to rise, the full stack consultancy will need more partner cloud architects. Once more customers become rise customers, the full stack consultancy will need more specific engineers with SAP basis knowledge. If our classical basis administrator has positioned themselves in the right company at the right time, then they will be able to ride the rise wave. Of course, riding a rise wave sounds idyllic, but there is another problem to hit our classical basis administrator role, the rise of AI, pun is intended. AI is going to disrupt everything we've ever known about SAP administration. 
I have to say, I'm sorry. Like any good book, I've duped you into thinking this was just one video with a conclusion, when really it's a trilogy. Find out more in my next video on the subject of how AI will disrupt everything I've just discussed. The best way to not miss that video is to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out. Just click the link in the bottom right here, click subscribe, it's that easy. As always, reference links are in the description down below, drop me a comment, give the video a thumbs up, and most importantly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, bye bye.